Assistant Division Governor of Central South. He credits Toastmasters for giving him the confidence to be here today. Today, I introduce to you the distinguished Toastmaster, Terry Haywood. That's a wonderful introduction. It almost seemed like I wrote that myself. <laughs> As you can see, we're in the New Orleans style, and that's why my facilitator has on her mask. She's just so involved, she didn't want to take it off. Now, the purpose of our presentation today, maximize your Toastmasters experience. Some of you, I know, are in beautiful clubs, right? Let me see your hands if you are. Okay, you're attending those club meetings, and you're probably wondering, what can I do to get the most out of being a Toastmaster? Well, I have to confess to you today, I can't tell you everything in 40 minutes. However, I did provide some nice handouts, and some of them are on the chair. For those who don't have them, I promise after the meeting, I will definitely try to get you a copy. But just in case I don't, I would like for you to write down my email address, because I would like for you to have one of these, because these provide wonderful links and also an explanation to help you maximize your benefits at Toastmasters, because it's really important. <coughs> Before I begin, let me just do a quick survey. How many of you have been in Toastmasters for less than six months? Okay, how many have, has been here less than a year? Okay, and finally, more than a year. Okay, wow, we have quite a nice diversification here. Well, what I would like to say is, first of all, you made the first step. You are in a club. But did you know that Toastmasters has over 225,000 clubs nationwide and even international? Did you know that? But Toastmasters, to me, it all begins with the mission statement. And for some of those who have those, I would like for you to read that out loud. The club mission statement. Do everyone, I know most people don't have a copy, but for those who do, can you just recite the mission of the club with me? The mission of a Toastmasters club is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every member has the opportunity to develop communication and leadership skills which in turn fosters self-confidence and personal growth. Well, that's the first thing right there, personal growth. Each one of us in this room has a goal that we have set. And I think that for most of us, that first goal is to what? Get over fear. Standing up in front of a group of people and expressing yourself. I know a lot of us love to talk. <laughs> I know I do. But when you have a serious presentation, you're in front of your boss, you're in your church, whatever organization you're in, you want to be able to present your ideals so that they're understood. That's part of being in Toastmasters, to maximize that. Once you get over the fear, it's just getting over other skills or completing certain skills. Therefore, the first thing you want to do to maximize your Toastmasters experience is review that competent communicator manual. Go through it, look at the requirements, give a speech. Because again, once you complete the first speech, the icebreaker, you've already gotten over fear. But when you get to that tenth speech and you're trying to motivate someone to believe in your ideas, you have masterized the entire competent communicator manual, and you are a competent Toastmaster. Now, how many people are in clubs that have over 20 members? Do you find it hard to speak? Is it hard to get on the agenda to do a speech? Guess what? The one thing I would like to recommend is other clubs. Go to other Toastmasters clubs. 
There are so many Toastmasters clubs in your vicinity, you just need to go and visit those. Our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing has this wonderful program. Do, does anybody know what that is? Club Ambassador. Club Ambassador. I'm going to give this guy a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The Club Ambassador. You go to three clubs, you get the uh, officer of that club to complete a form. You list three unique things about that club. You turn it form into Joan Moore, and she will give you this lovely pen. I finally got mine because I was too lazy to fill out the paperwork, <laughs> but I finally did it. What that does, it helps you to see what other people do, and it also gives you a chance to complete your CC, your AC, whatever it takes. If your club is just overwhelmed, try visiting other clubs. It's the simplest going on the website, which I do have, and I'm sure a lot of us know what the website is by now, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't, it's toastmasters.org. But again, I would definitely have that information for those who don't have it. Now, what is the one thing about Toastmasters that people probably don't realize? We all know about the fear of public speaking. We all want to improve our speaking skills. But do you know that all of us come from different walks of life? We come from different jobs. That is the greatest thing to be in Toastmasters, is the ability to network with each other. How many times have you seen people have a business, they want to sell a product, but they don't know the skills involved to actually sell that product? Well, here, we have so many different methods of achieving that skill. It's just wonderful. Once you finish that 10 speech, how many confident communicators do we have? As you see, I love asking questions. <laughs> we have an advanced communication session. This is where you show what you love to do. We have humorous speeches speaking to them, specialty speeches. Wow, you get an award. We have a manual to teach you how to accept an award and give an award. How great is that? <laughs> Whatever field that you like to do, Toastmasters have a manual for you. And this is some of the things people don't understand or don't pursue. They get their competent communicator speech, or they finish the 10 speeches and I'm done. That's it. Why not go to the advanced menu? You can do 10 speeches additional to achieve your bronze. Do we have any bronze, by the way? <laughs> she finished 10 additional speeches. After that, you do 10 more speeches. You achieve your competent communicator silver. How many silvers do we have? <laughs> Then you do 10 more speeches. <laughs> By then, you've done 40 speeches. You have achieved your competent communicative goal. How many? <laughs> Come on, be proud of that. And that's another thing. Toastmasters reward you seem like for everything you do. <laughs> everything. Look at all of these pins, right? It's beautiful because recognition helps people to be motivated. It helps people to pursue more goals. Even though we are a self-motivated club, there are so many people that love awards. <laughs> I'm not saying any names. But those are other areas. But Toastmasters is not about communicating by itself. They also have a leadership track. Did you know that? Yes. yes? Okay, how many of us completed that content leader manual? All right. Now, for those who didn't, let me tell you, it's really easy. Because what you can do is some of the roles you do in the club, we know about those roles, right? Timer, Arbivarian, general evaluator, toastmaster, speech evaluator, all of these roles. 
like I said, Toastmaster love to give out awards. <laughs> when you do those awards, you complete the book, you get a competent leader in. Isn't that great? <laughs> I think so. But again, it's not even about the competent communicator man. Let's say if you finish 10 speeches, you've done the competent leader man. Guess what? You want to be an officer of a club? You want to be a leader? We have club leadership. We have the secretary, club secretary. We have club treasurer. We have club president. Any leaders out there? Like I said, I love asking questions. So we'll be doing this a lot, unfortunately. Or fortunately, if you like to But we have club leaders, and I think that the club leaders are more, most important for a club because good leadership brings what? Anyone? Members. Members. Okay, that's a good one. Any others? Okay, well, good club leadership, leadership. <laughs> provides good clubs. Those clubs are being led in the right direction. They understand Toastmasters protocol. They understand what it takes to be a good club. They're having good meetings. People are completing the manuals needed to be achieved as a good club. Because did, a lot, did any of you go to the banner parade? Did you see some of those banners with those great ribbons on there? Guess what that means? Those are good clubs. Wouldn't you want to be a part of a club that is dynamic and have ribbons? because they've achieved all of the goals that are needed to, to be successful. Good leadership helps them. I urge you to, if you don't do anything else, become a club officer at least once. Then if you enjoy it, become a club officer again, and again, and again. Because there's seven club officer roles. If you do all seven roles, Come see me one day and I'll give you another minute. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> but being an officer don't stop at the club level. We have district officers. We have area governors. Area governors are usually responsible for five to six clubs. And they serve as a mentor to these clubs because we have seasoned clubs. But we have new clubs. As Toastmasters, you know that one of our biggest goals is to open new clubs. Well, those clubs need to be mentored. They need to have structure. They need to know what it takes to be a successful club. Every governor's help with that process. <coughs> they go to these clubs, they look over that club success plan, which all clubs go through. And the area governor helps those clubs make decisions. I look out into this crowd, and I see many area governors. I'm going to ask another question. <laughs> How many area governors out here? Past the president. OK, I mean. <laughs> So I see what I need to try to motivate me to do. Be an area governor. I was an area governor for six months, maybe several years ago. I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to be an area governor again because the thing that I've learned most about Toastmasters, the thing that keeps me going day in and day out, is the ability to help others. Now people, you may hear that term a lot, but for me, it's something of a reality. The biggest thing I like about Toastmasters is going to different clubs and meeting new people. People just like you are starting out for the first time. Because like the mission statement says, mutually supporting. Meaning you support me, and I support you. You will be surprised once you meet a Toastmaster. You're Toastmaster for life. There's no I quit, that's it. No. no. I try doing it every year. But I'm here because of people like you. People like you keep us going. Because it's a 
only so much you can learn in life. But the, your life is only affected by the way you affect other lives. And that's what it's all about. That's how you maximize your post experience. And even when you become an officer, when you do certain things, post have a manual for you. Believe me. And not only that, we don't just give you a book and say, here, read this book. You're going to be the best president ever. No. It doesn't work like that at all. We have officers trained. Have you ever heard of Toastmaster Leadership Institute? Yes? I love questions. OK. We train you to be good. And some people may say, gosh, I'm truly tired of going to these Toastmaster leadership meeting is just a waste of time. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Why don't you teach the course? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to me. <laughs> we make sure that whatever you want to accomplish is there. Because again, if you're going to run for an officer and get credit, the best way to get credit is what? Teach the class, right? How many people can really teach a class? One, two, three, four, okay, five. Well, let me ask some of the people that didn't raise their hand. <laughs> what would be the barrier to prevent you from doing that? I'm listening. This is a, I would, okay, I could have done it like this. I could have said, okay, let's do 25 true or false questions. 25 multiple choice and 25 essays. I could have done that. That would have been boring. Half of you would have properly left. I know I would have. So this is pretty much the interaction. You tell me, I tell you. We share. Mutually supportive. The thing about doing a class is, guess what? We have a manual for that. <laughs> If you ever get familiar with Toastmasters' website, you will find scripts for everything you see here. Everything we do at Toastmasters, there is a script. There is a wrong way, and there is the Toastmasters' way. If I don't tell you anything else, remember that website. Remember the Toastmasters.org website, because it is, has a abundance of information out there. From everything from your first speech, from, you can hear from some of the greatest speakers. You can be whatever you want to be. But you just have to just remember to go there. Now, guess what? Got a question. How many people love to compete? Okay. What about the other hand? What do you like to do? <laughs> How many people really love to compete? Come, there you go. You gotta give yourself a hand. Come Toastmasters has a really good contest. I'm sure that you've heard the evaluation contest and Mr. Tim Wilson did his thing as usual. But I'm sure that Tim had to do practice just like all of us here. Right? Because to maximize your experience, you got to do the three things. You got to prepare. You got to practice. And you have to perform. That's how you get better. If I just came here and just started talking, you would be like, wow, that dude look like he on some drugs. <laughs> but you have to practice. You have to prepare. Because this is a statement in Toastmasters that always sticks to my heart. If you don't prepare, you deserve to fail. People don't plan to fail, they just fail to plan. If you plan your speeches, you plan your career in Toastmasters, you just say to yourself, in six months, I want to finish my CC. It can happen. Because if it don't, if you become a procrastinator, then you will probably be in Toastmasters 10 years and you haven't even done your icebreaker. 
you'd be surprised. There are people like that. But being a mentor, being someone that is seasoned, the one thing that I can say is there are ways to push those people on. That's how you maximize your experience. You know what you can do, but can you teach others to do that? And like Dittmar said today, you can't share something that you haven't experienced yourself. <laughs> and being firsthand, I am a firsthand product of what Toastmasters can do for you. Because I can tell you something that happened to me five years ago. And the reason why I'm in Toastmasters, I work for a downtown location, downtown company. They asked me one simple question. It was a crowd similar to this. They asked me one question. They said, what is your name? And I froze. I basically didn't know my name. I didn't know my son's name, and he is a junior. <laughs> <laughs> My manager came to me and he said, whatever your name is, you have to go to Toastmasters. <laughs> I was pretty excited because I had my glass and I'm ready to toast, right? But, <laughs> but that wasn't it at all. I got a chance to do my icebreaker and I was so nervous. I mean, you're talking about knees shaking, your teeth. All I can do is think about when is the six minutes up? <laughs> when can I finish? After that, I was so nervous. It took me six months to do speech two. And this is no joke. But after speech two, you start feeling confident. You start getting over the fear. Next thing you know, they couldn't keep me quiet. <laughs> two, one, two, three, four, five, six. The more speeches I did, the better I got. Because in the manual, you do what the manual says. You don't have to make any things up. You talk about things that mean most to you. I got a chance to talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about Toastmasters. Sure, you don't want to get out there and have a stand-up comedy like Chris Rock or some of the dirty comedians out there, but you can pretty much explore whatever topic that suits you. You do a wonderful job because this is something that you know. Some of the tips I always tell people is, I see people, they bring, they have notes, and they're talking about themselves. Who's going to depict them? You were not born in 63, you were born in 67, come on. <laughs> Think about it. You get an opportunity to express yourself to people that have the same love as you. Because the thing I do like about Toastmasters is, not only are you representing yourself, you're representing your club, you're representing your area, you're representing your vision and your history. So think about it. When you're doing those speeches, you have all this pressure, not, not really pressure, but you have all of this ability to affect others. And not only yourself, other people depend on you. Also, the way to maximize your Toastmasters experience is just be a problem. Because DTM, ACS, all of that stuff, they're just letters. Basically, to me, I like wearing the pins because they're double. But if they, it's just not about the pins. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even qualify for the ambassador award because, like I said, I wouldn't fill out the paperwork because I enjoy going to other clubs. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy doing this. It doesn't matter. I don't, why? I don't need to get paid because you know why? I was a shy person and Toastmasters have given me the confidence to talk to you guys. It has given me the confidence to share what I've got in five years. It gives me the opportunity to say, this is a great organization. If you have any doubts about what Toastmasters can do for you, I'm living proof, it works. There are a lot of DTMs out there that came from the same mode that I did. 
And over the years, you just continue to improve. And I'm sure that when you're spending your club dues, you have to think about, what can I do to get to the next level? There are a lot of things you can do. Now, do we have any funny people out here? I mean, I mean, <laughs> come on, I know somebody can tell a joke or two now. Come on. Okay. How many people can speak on the cuff? If I came to you and told you, excuse me, what is your name? Hey Paul. Hey Paul. Yes, sir. Terry. Nice to meet you, Terry. What is your favorite color and why? My favorite color is purple. And why? The reason is because my wife and I were looking at two different colors to symbolize our love and our marriage about six years back. And purple actually shows harmony, and the other color that we selected for our wedding was uh, silver. So because of those two, I find that purple harmonizes us as part of the wedding couple, but it also allows me to share that color and the symbolism of it in a wedding life. Ladies and gentlemen, the next table conversation. That's pretty much it. That's a contest in itself. <laughs> now I come to you. What is your name, sir? Adam. Adam? Okay. I tell you, today is Saturday, right? Yes. But what is your favorite day of the week? Uh, Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I can give you one to two minutes, what can you tell me why? Saturday is a really great day. You have a very busy week uh, through the, what, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then finally you relax Saturday. And then Sunday I tell you start to prepare for relax. Sunday is a really time to relax. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. 
if you want to achieve a DTM, it's more than speeches. It's more than leadership. It's about commitment, dedication, focus. But like I said before, they make you become a better person. Not only professionally, personally. I have become a great person. I am the president of my voting league. Before Toastmasters, I couldn't dream of being the president of anything. I couldn't even be the president of my family. <laughs> <laughs> because I was afraid to talk. How can I tell this person what to do when I can't even hold a conversation with her without? Let me know. How can I do that? How can she take me serious when I don't take myself serious? You have to take yourself serious. Take your Toastmasters career serious. If you put in the time, you put in the effort, you will accomplish a lot. And a year from now, you will be here and I will be in the audience. And I will be like, wow, how did, did, I, did I actually talk to you? <clears throat> this is what it's all about. I'll tell you, one day I was at one of my three clubs, it was one of the clubs I was, I was in. And I was just going through my normal day. And all of a sudden, they took one minute and they called me up. So I came up to the lectern and they presented me with two nice Toastmasters pins. I was so touched that I was in tears. That's the first time I had cried at a Toastmasters meeting ever. But the point is, you will be surprised at how you touch people the things you say, the help that you provide people, it goes a long way. Some people never forget it. You're almost iconic to them. But to me, it was just all in the day's work. I just was just doing something that someone had helped me. Now let me ask you a question. Another question, yeah, I know. Do you think you are a good evaluator? I can't count up to 10, so it was like seven. <laughs> but let me tell you about being a good evaluator. When you get a review from your boss, what do you think that is called? Evaluation. If your boss came to you, what is your name? Maria. Maria, you just did a lousy job. You don't do anything right. Oh, my God. How would you take that? Would you enjoy that? Probably not. If you do, then I don't know. But <laughs> you would not enjoy that. If your boss, you just, uh, you just so, I can't even come up with words. That would not go over well. How about, you're just great. Everything you do is great. Can you walk on water? <laughs> that, too, is not great. You have to be able to to have the sandwich effect, you want to start off soft. Give them the need to improve the bucket zone. And then finally, end it on a good note. When you become a good evaluator, that's what you're going to learn. And if you don't evaluate the teachers, you're missing out. Because to me, that is the most important thing you can teach someone that is giving a speech. Because evaluation is where it's at. We're just about done. Before I end this session, I would like to thank everyone. I want to make sure that you fill out the evaluation. Don't worry about hurting my feelings. <laughs> because again, it's only going to help me improve for the next time. But I'll tell you what, if you take advantage of what Toastmasters has to offer, I guarantee you, you will be a confident speaker yourself. But let me answer this one young lady's question. You have your hand up? I have an evaluation. She doesn't have an evaluation sheet. That really makes me <laughs> sad. <laughs> because that is one less person that's going to evaluate me. But I promise you, we will get you an evaluation sheet. Are there any more questions? Yes. You briefly mentioned about the three um, groups. Yes. 
I have some, some side in mind and a lot of resources, of people, contacts I want to start with, but I don't have anything that will ignite the movement at all. Like when you say, where do I start? It's a good person. We have uh, Lieutenant Governor of Martin, John Moore, and if you follow me after this, I will introduce you to her. She will give you whatever you need to get a new club started. That is her puppy. She does it, and I definitely will introduce you to Joan Moore. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Yes. If you have a pen, my name is Terry Haywood. My email address is t small t dot Haywood. 33 at yahoo.com. I would like to thank you very much. It's been enjoyable. I hope you learned something. I definitely did. And again, the biggest way to maximize your Toastmasters experience is to come here and give the same presentation to the future Toastmasters. Thank you so much. I should have some other handouts and some mint. Help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Terry Haywood. On behalf of Toastmasters, we would like to thank you by presenting you a certificate and a gift for coming out to speak on how to maximize your Toastmasters. Just a reminder to turn in your evaluation forms to me before you leave. You all have been given poker chips. If you do not have a poker chip, be sure to come to me before you leave. And remember that if you turn in your poker chips at the RSVP desk, you will receive raffle tickets. That concludes our session. I forgot to tell you my name, actually. I've been disguising myself the whole day. I forgot I even had an identity. But my name is Charlene Reinhardt. I've been a, I've been a Toastmaster for a little under a year, since July 2010. I've been able to maximize my Toastmasters experience because I've been following people like Terry Haywood, who is a DTM. So I've been able to get two CCs and two Cs. Because of leadership like that. So go out there and maximize your experience, and you'll see what you can achieve as well. Thank you for attending this presentation. Hey,